This year is absolutely flying by. I cannot believe that we're already in May. But with another month in the bag, that also means another month worth of pickups that I want to show off to all you and also give you some tips along the way. So be sure and hit that subscribe button if you have not done so already so you can join the beautiful Retro Wolf 88 family. And let's talk about my pickups for the month of April 2019. All right, folks, let's go over Instagram pickups first. For those of you who do not know, Instagram is a fantastic way to connect with the gaming community as a whole, especially the video game collecting community. There are a ton of amazing game collectors on Instagram. You can trade, you can buy, you can sell. There are a lot of good deals to be found among other collectors on Instagram, so I highly recommend if you're a collector and you're not on Insta Instagram, start an Instagram page, start connecting with all these other video game collectors, and I promise you it will pay off. Now, with all that being said, I have several shout outs to give today with various people on Instagram that have hooked me up. And let's start with Rayman Origins on the PlayStation Vita. I've been collecting very heavily for the PlayStation Vita here lately. I really like the system. It's a very cool handheld console. And uh, I got Rayman Origins from an Instagram user called 16-Bit Artifacts Sell Page. And all of these Instagram users that I give shoutouts to, I will leave their profile name in the description down below so that you can look them up, follow their pages, and maybe you can buy some games from them as well. Now, what's funny about this is my buddy Retro Gaming Zone, uh, my buddy Carl from Retro Gaming Zone on Instagram, he hooks me up all the time, and he knows I'm collecting for Vita because he's collecting for Vita as well. And he saw this game being sold by 16-bit artifact sell page and he snatched it up for me because he knew I'd want to have it. So I just reimbursed him. He had the guy ship it to me. Done deal. So thanks, Carl. Once again, man, I appreciate it. Now, while we're talking about Carl from Retro Gaming Zone, he also hooked me up this month as well in April. Um, he hooked me up with Persona 4 Golden for the PlayStation Vita, which is really cool. I've never played a Persona game before, so I may have to check this out. I've always heard great things about the series. And now that I know a lot about Atlas as a publisher and developer, I should probably check the game out. So he hooked me up with that, but not only did he hook me up with that, but he hooked me up with something for the GameCube that I have been looking for for a very long time because it's very difficult to find. And that is a complete in big box copy of Dance Dance Revolution Mario Mix for the GameCube. I did have a copy of this case and disc only, but I did not have the complete box. And this has the game, the case, the manual, it has the mat, it has everything, and the box is in fantastic condition. So I was incredibly, incredibly happy to get that. And Carl, dude, Thank you so much for hooking me up with this. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it because this is definitely an amazing piece in my GameCube collection and uh, puts me one step closer to a true, complete, comprehensive collection. This time from Instagram user Nintendo Collection 247 and he hooked me up with Gauntlet Dark Legacy, complete in really good condition. He gave me a really good price on this game because this game is going up in price. So. I was very happy to get a hold of that. And uh, honestly, it looks like a really cool game. I'll probably check this one out. Maybe I'll do a future episode of GameCube Gallery on this game. I'm sure I will eventually. Next up is a good friend of mine, Instagram user Sega.2584. And he was getting rid of several games in his PlayStation Vita collection. He knew I was collecting, so he contacted me and made me a great deal that I could not turn down. So we have Soul Sacrifice. Sly Cooper, the collection. Terraria Sealed, which is one of my favorite games of all time. I'm trying to get this for every console it was ever released physically on, so I'm very happy about that. Uncharted Golden Abyss. Silent Hill Book of Memories. Earth Defense Force 2 Invaders from Planet Space. And last but certainly not least, one of my favorite 2D platformers, Rayman Legends. I cannot thank you enough for the hookup on these PlayStation Vita games. And last but certainly not least is another really good friend of mine on Instagram named Gabe. His profile name is HG underscore boxing 89. And he hooked me up with one Wii game and four PlayStation Vita games. For the Wii, he hooked me up with Sonic Colors. So I believe I have all the Sonic games for the Wii. I've never played any of them. I've heard, of, I've heard they're pretty decent, so I may check them out soon. Uh, then for the PlayStation Vita, we have 
Valhalla Knights 3. We have Dengeki Bunko Fighting Climax. I have no idea what that is. Borderlands 2. Please, people, do not play Borderlands 2 on the PlayStation Vita. The controls are awful. Play it on the Xbox 360, the Xbox One, the PS4. Just don't play it on the Vita. You will not have a good experience. And finally, we have PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale, which was yet another example of Sony blatantly copying Nintendo on one of their ideas. So there you go. But I'm sure it's pretty cool. I'll probably check it out. So thank you, Gabe. I really appreciate you hooking me up once again. I don't really have anything spectacular from the retail game store from, but I did get a couple of things. Uh, so first off, from a game store called the Game Shack in Dunlap, Tennessee. I got a, uh, they had one NES game that I did not have, World Games, pretty common game. I just never picked it up. And I'm also collecting older strategy guides. So I, I got Goldeneye 007 for the Nintendo 64. That's pretty cool. And Resident Evil Zero for the GameCube. So I'm pretty, pretty cool like that. Uh, and then from a game store called Game Giant, they're actually in Wilmington, North Carolina. I stopped there whenever I was out of town this past week. So we got a PlayStation Vita game I've never heard of. It's called Lego Chima Lavel's Journey. Looks like a pretty weird Lego game. I have no idea if it's any good or not. It was pretty cheap, so I snatched up a couple of bucks. A fairly common Sega Master System game that I did not have, uh, California Games, so that's pretty cool. And then they actually had one game, one black label GameCube game I didn't have, and they had one player's choice GameCube game I didn't have. So the black label game they had that I needed was the Fairly Odd Parents Breaking the Rules, so pretty cool. And then the player's choice game they had that I needed was Tony Hawk Pro Skater 4. In addition to that, at Game Giant in Wilmington, North Carolina, which by the way, I'll leave a link to their website in the description and I'll leave a link to the Game Shacks. I don't think they have a website, but they do have a Facebook page, so I'll leave a link to that in the description down below as well. But at Game Giant, they had a box full of Nintendo Power magazines that one of the employees was actually selling uh, from his own collection for two bucks a piece. So I snatched up a bunch of them that I needed. Um, didn't have to pay tax since he was selling it from his own collection and it wasn't actually part of the game store's inventory. So that was pretty cool. So I'm just gonna quickly show you the uh, covers to all these issues and, and what the issue numbers are. Issue number 63, issue number 122, issue number 65, issue number 46, Issue number 43, issue number 85, issue number 82, issue number 107, issue number 108, issue number 127, issue number 113, issue number 58, issue number 81, and finally issue number 64. Love Nintendo Power magazines, especially the old issues, and I'm actually going for a complete set of Nintendo Power. Still got to get that issue number one. That is the most expensive one, but I'll get it one day. Let's move on to the Nintendo Switch pickups for the month of April. Now, those of you who watch my channel on a regular basis or follow my Instagram page know that I have an unhealthy obsession with the Nintendo Switch and collecting games for it, uh, which honestly is putting me in a little bit of debt. But you know what? That's my problem. But let me show you what my pickups are for the month of April. We've got some pretty good stuff here. We have Darksiders War Mastered Edition. Now what's cool about this, notice it has a black spine. That was a misprint. THQ Nordic actually confirmed that. So this particular copy uh, may be worth something one day once they fix it and, and I guess they're gonna I guess they're gonna produce more copies with the normal red spine. So that's pretty cool. Then we have Wasteland 2 Director's Cut. You know, this game looks pretty cool. I've never played it, but I am intrigued by it, so I'm probably gonna check this one out pretty soon. The game that I'm currently playing that I never played before, Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen from Capcom. Really good deal for this game. It's only 30 bucks, brand new. Comes with all the DLC, massive, massive action RPG. So far, I'm liking it quite a bit. And I saw this on uh, Amazon for 15 bucks, brand new. So I figured, why not? All Star Fruit Racing. It looks like a pretty decent little kart racer. Um, and I've heard that it's not too bad. So uh, I'll check it out. It's not going to replace Mario Kart, obviously, but I'll at least give it a try. 
Next up, we have the limited releases that I got in the month of April for the Switch. First up, we have limited run games. I got two releases from them for in April. I got Iconoclasts, which I'm currently playing. This is number 25 in their uh, Switch release. Uh, this game is really awesome. Really good game. I am enjoying it quite a bit. I may do an impressions video on it at some point. Uh, but if you've never heard of Iconoclasts, I recommend looking into it. It is a very quality indie game. And then a game that I've never played or really heard of, Dan Maku Unlimited 3. And this is number 24 for the Switch from Limited Run Games. And it is a, uh, looks like a vertical bullet hell shoot 'em up. It looks pretty intense. And I do like shoot 'em up, so I'll probably check this out at some point. From Super Rare Games, I got three releases from them in April. Number 13, 14, and 15. Number 13 is Q2. This is a first person puzzle game similar to like Portal, but with, you know, different puzzle elements to it. And you know what? It looks pretty cool. So I'm going to play this at some point. All of these honestly look really good. Then we have, I don't know if it's pronounced Faerun or Faerun, but I'm going to go with Faerun. Faerun Collection. So this is a collection of four games in the Faerun series. And it's sort of a retro style um, adventure game similar to games in like the Zelda series. Um, it looks like a lot of fun, so I'll probably check this out at some point. Last but not least, we have Joe Dever's Lone Wolf. And this is a, I guess it's an, it's an interactive story game with some turn-based battles. I don't really know a lot about this game, but it does look pretty cool. And I will at least give it a try and see if I like it. So in April, I also picked up the Nintendo Labo uh, VR kit, ToyCon number four VR kit, starter set and blaster. Um, I was very intrigued by this. I really wanted to fit to experience what Nintendo's version of VR is with uh, Labo. And you know what? It's pretty cool. Now I have not put the blaster together yet. I just haven't had time. I'm going to do that in the very near future, but I did put the headset itself together. And besides not having a strap, which makes no sense to me, they should have included a strap. But besides that, it's pretty cool. It's not something you're going to spend hours and hours and hours with, but it's something that you can pull out and you know have a couple minutes of fun with here and there but the main reason i bought it is because i wanted to check out the zelda breath of the wild vr mode and the super mario odyssey vr mini games that came with a free update that you can play with this headset the update is out i just haven't had a chance to download them and try them out yet but i will in the very near future it's pretty impressive i mean with a few pieces of cardboard and some lenses they were able to turn the switch into a vr device so i think it's pretty cool but it's not anything groundbreaking and it's not near as good as the playstation vr or other vr headsets obviously but it's a cool little uh it's a cool little toy to play with so this is probably the fourth time that this particular individual has hooked me up he has become a regular contact for me so what i do is every two or three months i'll send him a text and i'll say hey man you got any games and uh, oftentimes he'll send me a bunch of pictures and he'll give me a price and he gives me a very good deal and basically he goes around I've, I've told everybody this before but just to recap this guy goes around looking for music cds he buys and sells music cds and makes a, a profit doing that uh, so he goes to a lot of flea markets yard sales thrift stores that kind of thing uh, but if he sees games and he can get them good for a good price, he'll pick them up too and then he'll turn around and sell them to me. So uh, me and him have a pretty good uh, mutual benefit going on because he'll, he'll make a little bit of money off of them and then I'll get uh, games to add to my collection or games that I can try to flip as well. He hooked me up with some good stuff this time. Now, there are a few items that unfortunately I have sold since I got this game lot. And one of those items was a very mint condition case and manual, no disc, case and manual for a Shadow Tower for the PlayStation 1, which is a pretty rare PlayStation 1 game. Uh, my buddy Carl from Retro Gaming Zone bought that from me. I uh, gave him a good deal on it. But uh, I don't have that to show today, but it was it was mint. You just, that's all you need to know is a mint condition. So. Uh, here's what we got here. So let's start with uh, let's start with these random PC games because I don't even know what I'm gonna do with these to be honest. So we have Mist, the SpongeBob SquarePants movie, Mall Tycoon, Diva Stars, and Sealed Command and Conquer, which that's actually pretty cool. Next up, we have a few uh, empty Nintendo DS cases. Unfortunately, they're empty, but he did tell me they were empty, so it's all good. Uh, a game I've never heard of before called Lux Pain. Super Mario 64 DS, Mario Kart DS, 
and Dragon Quest Rocket Slime. Uh, next up, we have some a couple of loose games. We've got Lego Star Wars 3 for the Nintendo 3DS and Zelda Four Swords for the Game Boy Advance. And we've got some Sega Dreamcast games here. Not all of these are complete, but some of them are. We have Ultimate Fighting Championship Loose, Sonic Adventure, no manual, Test Drive 6 with a manual but no back label, Virtual Tennis, loose and then these are the complete uh, Sega Dreamcast games that I actually added to my collection we've got Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Rogue Spear, The Grinch, Star Wars Episode 1 Racer this actually didn't have a manual I found a manual on eBay for like five bucks so I picked that up uh, Buzz Lightyear of Star Command, Donald Duck Going Quackers and Chicken Run so nothing really special there but I'm trying to, I think I'm trying to go for a complete Dreamcast collection, so, you know, those titles definitely help me get there. Uh, let's do PlayStation 2 next. So we've got a loose copy of Xenosaga Episode 1, and we have NFL Street 3, The Simpsons Game, Disney's Extreme Skate Adventure, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, Yu-Gi-Oh! The Duelist of the Roses, and a very good game in Hidden Gem Second Sight. Monopoly, The Family Guy video game, Castlevania Lament of Innocence, Def Jam Fight for New York, unfortunately just the case in manual, no disc, but still pretty cool, Scarface The World is Yours, a loose copy of Gear, Guilty Gear X2, and Oni. Next up, we'll do PlayStation 1, we've got Power Serve 3D Tennis Long Box. Saga Frontier 2, Spyro Year of the Dragon Greatest Hits Edition, no manual, The Mummy, Peter Pan and Disney's Return to Neverland, RPG Maker, that's pretty cool, Tekken 2, Star Wars Dark Forces, no manual, The Grinch, no manual, we have Pac-Man Maze Madness in a Menace to Society case. <laughs> Crash Bandicoot 2, Cortex Strikes Back Greatest Hits Edition, no manual. Crash Bandicoot Greatest Hits, no manual. Subi Doo, Subi Doo. Scooby Doo and the Cyber Chase. Off World Interceptor Extreme. Perfect Weapon. Crusaders of Might and Magic. Gex. And Will of Fortune. Uh, next up, we have a couple of Xbox games. We have Crash Bandicoot, The Wrath of Cortex. A game that I've heard is a hidden gem, The Punisher, and Star Wars Battlefront 2 Platinum Hits. Uh, lastly, we have the GameCube games that I got in this lot. We got a couple of loose games. We've got Marvel Nemesis Rise of the Imperfects. We have Star Wars Rogue Leader Rogue Squadron 2. We have Metro Prom 2 Echoes. And we have TAC 2 Staff of Dreams with a manual. Now, the not loose games we have are... Uh, X-Men The Official Game, Scooby-Doo Night of 100 Frights, Call of Duty 2 Big Red One, Madden NFL 07, Fantastic Four, Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius Attack of the Twonkies, another Call of Duty 2 Big Red One, and the two gems of the lot for the GameCube, Animal Crossing Player's Choice, and Mario Kart Double Dash. What you should take from this is if you're going to collect games and you want to buy game lots you need to make contacts with people like that guy how do you find these people well usually you meet up with them either through instagram craigslist let go just be careful be safe make sure you know if you meet somebody uh from a craigslist post meet them in a in a daylight in daylight in a public location with, with a lot of people um, until you start to develop some trust with them like I, I have with this guy, but uh, but yeah It's really good to make contacts and if you can if you can buy game lots and Do it in such a way to where it benefits you what a lot of collectors do is we'll buy game lots We'll keep the games we want try to sell the rest to recoup our money Maybe make a little bit of extra money to go back into the collection. Um, it doesn't always work out that way but it's still a lot of fun nonetheless. Now, let's end the video with a couple of really awesome flea market pickups that I got recently. So on my way to film Local Collector Interview Episode 2 with Anthony, which by the way, you should check that out if you haven't. Part 1 is the interview, which is a really good interview. 
Part two is the game room tour, and Anthony has an amazing game room tour. I'll leave the links to those videos in the description down below. But on my way to Anthony's, I stopped at a flea market that I had never been to before. I got a pretty decent pickup, you know, my first day there. I got these two really cool PlayStation um, driving controllers. I got a PS1 with all hookups and three controllers, one of which is third party, as well as four PS1 games, NASCAR 2000, NASCAR 2001, uh, WWF Warzone, and Namco Museum Volume 3, and I also got a GameCube controller that's in pretty good condition, just needs to be cleaned up a little bit. So I got those all for one guy for like 20 bucks, so that was a really good deal. And then I also got a few NES games. We got a box copy with the manual and the cartridge of Airwolf on the NES. Loose copy of Ghostbusters, a loose, a, a loose copy of Airwolf, and a copy of Knight Rider on the NES. And I got those all for like two bucks a piece, so I was very happy about that as well. Now, here's another piece of advice I have for everybody, and a lot of you probably already know this, but anytime you go to a flea market, yard sale, thrift store, antique store, if you don't see video games, always ask people if they have any video games for sale. The reason is, they may have some tucked away that you're just not seeing, number one. Number two, they may have some that they just didn't even think to bring to the flea market or didn't even think to bring out for the yard sale. If this happens, if they say, yeah, I have some games, I just didn't bring them, give them your phone number. So that's exactly what I did at the flea market. So I was in one guy's booth and I said, hey, you got any video games? And he said that he doesn't, but his son has a box of Nintendo games and a couple of Sega games. Um, and he just didn't bring them. And I said, well, I might be interested. He said, it's probably a box of around 30 games. And I said, well, I'll probably buy them all from you depending on what you have and then what the price is. And I gave him my phone number and I told him, you know, just give me a call back when you find them and I'll make another trip out here. I didn't expect him to call me back, but the very next weekend he called me back. He said he found the games. I asked him to send me pictures, he sent me pictures, and I immediately knew that it was going to be a really good pickup. Me and him both came to a price that we were both happy with. First he was going to sell them to a, a video game website, but he didn't want to deal with having to pack them and ship them and all that other crap. So he figured he'd just sell them to me for cash for a, a much lower price. Now, another tip. Don't be afraid to negotiate with people on prices. The price he gave me initially was fine, but I wanted to bring it down a little bit. And the reason is, is because that particular flea market was about an hour and a half away. So it was gonna be about three hours out of my day, plus gas to get to that flea market and back to get that, that pickup. So I explained that to him and I said, you know, would you consider taking this much instead of this much since I have to drive all this way and use gas? And he did, he was perfectly fine with that. So I got it for an even better deal. So with all that being said, let me show you what I got from the guy in three, two, one. First up, and I didn't even know that this was going to be included. Um, I guess he just had the games in this and then he just threw it in for free is this Super Nintendo game case. Now, it's a little dirty and it's in a little bit rough condition, but it can be cleaned up and it could probably be fixed up a little bit. But this thing holds, it's a drawer that opens up and on the inside of it, there are slots for Super Nintendo games and it'll hold a lot of Super Nintendo games. And what's cool is you can also put NES games in, in it if you want to, they fit. Um, I tested that out. I don't know if I'm gonna keep it or not, but it was really cool nonetheless. Now let's get on to the games because there's some really good stuff here. So start with Sega Genesis. We'll save the two best for last. Um, a couple of sports games. We got Bill Walsh, college football. And a lot of these games are very dirty. So it's, I'm gonna have to do a lot of cleaning on these. Uh, Sonic 2, you pretty much see Sonic 2 everywhere. And Hardball 94. Now, the two really awesome games here are Earthworm Jim with a freaking sticker right on the front of the label. I'm gonna have to try to very carefully peel that off. The Earthworm Gym for the Sega Genesis and the really good one that needs to be cleaned up pretty bad is uh, Fantasy Star 4. That's a pretty rare Sega Genesis game so I'm pretty happy about that. For the Super Nintendo we've got uh, Mickey's Ultimate Challenge, Super Mario World, Disney's Aladdin, Family Feud, WWF Royal Rumble, Donkey Kong Country 2, DD's Kong Quest, The Seventh Saga, Monopoly, Vegas Stakes, Pitfall The Mayan Adventure, Super Metroid, Donkey Kong Country, 
two copies of Super Caesar's Palace, a copy of Paperboy 2 with a, a severely destroyed label, unfortunately, Mortal Kombat 3, Mortal Kombat 2, Math Blaster Episode 1. Then for the NES, we've got a Game Genie, which is really cool. Smash TV, really dirty, but I was very happy to find that because I needed that game. Uh, another game that I needed that I was happy to find was River City Ransom. Then we've got Dragon Warrior, Bomberman, Sky Shark, Yoshi, 720, Millipede, Mad Max, Tetris, Bases Loaded 2 Second Season, yet another Monopoly, and Gyromite, which feels pretty heavy, so this may have the uh, Famicom chip in it. I'll have to open it up and check it out. But this was a really awesome pickup because typically at flea markets, you know, I've had some decent luck at flea markets, but I haven't had a pickup like this at a flea market in quite some time. So I was very happy about that. And I hope that I find more pickups like this at flea markets in the future. So there you have it, folks. Those are my video game pickups for the month of April 2019. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure and hit that like button. It does help out the channel tremendously. Leave a question or comment down below about anything that you saw in the video today. And also let me know in the comments down below what you've picked up recently. If you've picked up anything cool, rare, if there's a story behind it. I want to hear about your pickups as well. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, please be sure and hit it so that you can join the Retro Wolf 88 family and help us reach our goal of a thousand subscribers. Until next time, keep playing games and having a good time, and I will see you all in the next video.